Arizona is about 30 percent Latino. Uh, Alabama is about 4 percent Latino. And so last year, when Arizona passed the most draconian anti-immigrant law in the country, there were large scale protests in Arizona, to be sure. But those protests weren't just in Arizona. There were protests against Arizona's new anti-immigrant law all over the country. There were nationwide boycotts organized against the state of Arizona. Arizona's anti-immigration bill, SB 1070, better known as the Papers, Please law, uh, frankly, became a national issue. More than a year later, after SB 1070 was stayed by the courts, Alabama passed an even more draconian law, a law that essentially makes it illegal to exist without documentation in Alabama. Your very existence in that state, in, a, in school, in a, in a car, in a church maybe, could be considered a crime under Alabama's new law. And when a federal judge in Alabama refused to block key provisions of that new anti-immigrant law, Alabama's Latinos, all 4% of them, in contrast to the 30 percent in Arizona, they comparatively were kind of just left on their own. Many just left altogether, just fled the state entirely. The New York Times reporting an exodus of Hispanic immigrants from one small Alabama town. The Monday after key parts of the law were upheld, the Alabama Department of Education told Politico that Hispanic students were absent from class at twice the normal rate. Now, that doesn't mean they are all undocumented immigrants, but families with even one member who has uncertain immigration status are weighing the cost of things like the kids going to school against the threat of families being broken up. Many of those who are staying are protesting. Last week, Latino students, workers, and businesses, business owners in the Birmingham era, excuse me, the Birmingham area, uh, stayed home as part of a boycott organized on Spanish language radio. Organizers estimate more than a hundred businesses were closed as part of the boycott. The guy behind Alabama's new anti-immigrant law is also the guy who wrote Arizona's Papers, Please law. He's also behind the new Kansas law that says essentially that you cannot register to vote in Kansas anymore without showing a birth certificate or a passport. His name is Chris Kobach. He's Kansas's secretary of state. Kobach describes the impact of the Alabama law so far as, quote, a win. He says, quote, it's self-deportation. If that's a win... From the perspective of Chris Kobach, what happens next in 4% Latino Alabama? In part, that depends on the legality of what Alabama is trying to do. After all, Alabama is still having its pants sued off over this. But it goes beyond the legal issue. In part, what happens next to the 4% Latinos in Alabama and to the rest of Alabama's immigrants depends on whether or not this starts being treated in Alabama as not just a demographics issue, but as a civil rights issue as a broad issue about who Alabama is in the 21st century, especially after who Alabama was in the 20th century. 16th Street Baptist Church, yeah. First Cult Church in Birmingham. Everybody's church. Through its history, it has always been a focal point for black people as a gathering place for the community. So many of the movements, marches, and demonstrations emanated out of the basement of this church. The bombing of the church happened right beyond the exit sign. That's what, that's what four little girls were killed and murdered in this church. It's very serious. This is sacred ground for us. As you might imagine, I, I I know Judge Blackburn, we were on the same court together. She succeeded me as chief judge of the court. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure that she uh, ruled in accordance with what she viewed to be the law. Unfortunately, in some very uh, serious way, she was mistaken. Ours is a country, really, that is based on immigration. We are a nation of immigrants. Only two categories of Americans uh, don't fall into the category of immigrants, and that is the Native Americans, the Indians, and the Black Americans. We're the only ones who didn't seek to come here. All of us, Black and Whites, have to keep working towards making all Americans realize that we are all in this boat together. That video report produced by the Pulitzer Prize winning reporter Jose Antonio Vargas, who in a jaw dropping New York Times magazine piece earlier this year revealed how he himself had come to this country as a child, as an undocumented immigrant. And he still does not have legal status. Joining us now is former Washington Post reporter, the founder of DefineAmerican.com, Jose Antonio Vargas. Jose, thanks very much for joining us tonight. It's nice to have you back. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. 
Um, this law exists uh, in Alabama now. In part, its future will be decided by the courts. But uh, there's also yes. other factors at work here. In, in Alabama, what have you been seeing in terms of organizing against it about its impact on the state already? You cannot overstate the impact of this law in the state. And I think more than just the organizing and the boycotting that's been happening, uh, that's been being organized by undocumented immigrants and their allies here in Alabama, I'm actually in Birmingham, right, the cradle of the civil rights movement. What's been interesting is, you know, at Define American, we're all about trying to kind of tell the stories of what's really happening here. Are the stories of like the farmer or the elementary school teacher, right? Or actually UW Clement, you know, civil rights icon. Um, who are connecting the dots and saying that this is a human rights, civil rights issue. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to play the video because, you know, to be sitting at 16th uh, uh, Street Baptist Church, you know, the site of the bombing in 1963, I can't believe that, what, nearly 50 years later, I mean, yesterday was the dedication of the Martin Luther King Memorial. Here we are <laughs> talking about an issue that's impacting, of course, you know, a specific demographic. And I think the question, you know, here that I've been asking people is, is this the real Alabama? Does this reflect what you want Alabama to be? Judge Clement, um, as far as I know, is the first African-American federal judge in yes. Alabama. Is that right? He, yes. I know he told yeah, nominated you. nominated by Jimmy Carter. He told you in that striking moment in the video that his successor uh, for his seat uh, on the federal court, Sharon Lovelace Blackburn, he said she was mistaken in her ruling to uphold parts yes. of this anti-immigration law. Did that give you any insight? Did he give you any insight into how a, a challenge to this ruling might play out? Well, I mean, again, back to the civil rights movement of the 60s, this is going to play out in the courts. This is what's going to happen. It's going to play out in the courts. And I think just as important, it's going to play out, you know, in homes, on the streets. It's going to play out in really, again, how we have to reframe how we think about immigration in this country. Um, you know, it's been really interesting. Last night, I actually was out at a Kohl's department store, right? I wanted to ask just everyday Alabamans about the law. And I talked to about six people, five of whom supported the law, but they couldn't quite tell me what was in the law. Um, you know, they didn't know, for example, that it's actually a crime. I mean, three days ago, what, Thursday, it would have been a crime for me as an undocumented immigrant to be in Alabama. They didn't know that. They didn't know that it's a crime, it's a felony for an undocumented immigrant to be actually getting water service. Because now an undocumented immigrant can't get into a business, you know, entity or a contract um, with the government. I mean, this, this is a real law affecting real lives. It's not an abstraction. Um, and I think that's something that I think we really need to figure out. I mean, that's what we're doing at Define American. Jose Antonio Vargas, the founder of DefineAmerican.com. Jose, please stay in touch with us as you continue to work on this. It's, it's, oh, thank it's you good so much for working on this. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Uh, best new thing in the world. It's coming up next.